Hi, my name is Steve Tegler. I'm a Senior Director of Systems Engineering in VMware's Cloud Native Apps Business Unit. And this Lightboard session is about mapping Kubernetes to your infrastructure. As we all know, Kubernetes provides some great primitives to work with and an architecture to define applications that's fairly straightforward and easy to work with. Lots of ecosystem examples are out there. And so what I want to talk about in this session is how do I take those primitives that exist and the definition of what I want to do and how do I actually do that and how do I do that uh, on a given infrastructure. So if we think about the app dev, she's up here and she's, uh, let's just say she's going to uh, uh, create an elk stack. And part of that elk stack is she's going to have to define all the different things that need to intercommunicate. Uh, maybe some require persistent storage. Maybe there's some security somewhere, right? So she's basically going to architect this. And she's going to architect this leveraging the Kubernetes API and the Kubernetes primitives. So inside Kubernetes, I've got these various primitives. I've got availability zone, um, defining security policy, load balancer. I've got persistent volumes here. And then, you know, metrics. So after I deploy my app, how am I going to understand how it's operating and working? And so um, the idea here is that, you know, when I look at, say, something like persistent volumes, the definition exists in Kubernetes. But what I actually have to do is I, I have to store that data somewhere. Right? It's got to end up on a spinning disk probably somewhere or an SSD somewhere in my, um, in, in my data center in a public cloud. So what I'm going to have to do as a part of this um, is I'm going to have to map uh, the, the ability to create persistent volumes, say maybe via storage classes, down to an actual storage uh, infrastructure solution. And so that's exactly where our traditional infrastructure operators step in. So normally, or what has been um, uh, a method here, is that the infrastructure operators are responsible for infrastructure. What we want to see these infrastructure operators do is we want to start having them elevate themselves. We want to have them move out of just infrastructure, and we want them to become platform reliability engineers. Basically, start leveraging um, some software principles and software methodologies, but apply that to my traditional uh, platforms that I provide internally uh, to other teams. So platform reliability engineer. Now, in this specific uh, case, let's just be very specific. This is really uh, you know, a, a Kubernetes cluster operator. And they're going to be responsible for this mapping of, of course, persistent volumes. Availability zones, you know, if I'm, if I'm leveraging on-prem infrastructure, I'm going to need to map the availability construct here that exists in Kubernetes down to a group of servers in my data center, in a specific rack, in a specific row. I'm going to need to do that. Same for security policy. I'm going to need to take the security policy and I'm going to need to map it into some sort of technology that can enforce the policy that I define in Kubernetes. Load balancing, same thing. Um, and then metrics, right? What's, what's going to be an easy way where uh, maybe as I deploy this ELK stack into Kubernetes, um, by, you know, just by defining the fact that I need some metrics, it will automatically happen for me. Okay, so that is, uh, that's kind of the idea of what we want to see here. So, um, you know, being from VMware, what I'd like to talk about is the way we map to VMware constructs and mainly the software-defined data center. So in this case, the compute is obviously vSphere. So when I think about availability zones, those will get translated to vSphere clusters. When I look at security policy, those will get translated into the NSX distributed firewall. So we'll be able to provide that micro-segmentation down to the pod level within Kubernetes. Load balancing, same thing. It's NSX. We're going to leverage the NSX load balancer here, type load balancer. Persistent volumes, here we can uh, leverage traditional data stores or we can leverage uh, just vSAN. We can get some advanced functionality like, you know, some dedupe capabilities and encryption and so forth. And then finally, monitoring the technology here from VMware is Wavefront. And so what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to get a little piece of code 
inject it into the deployment file here so that when they deploy their ELK stack, it automatically starts collecting information and metrics about, uh, about what's going on in their app. Now, I've just defined uh, you know, all of the VMware constructs here. Um, now, certainly in each one of these, there's a value prop with just vSphere leveraging it with Kubernetes and just NSX and just Wavefront and just you know, the storage solution here. Um, but the reality is I'm going to need to map and I'm going to need to configure each one of those up into Kubernetes. Wouldn't it be nice if, because I knew this was going to be the software defined data center, I could have a very prescriptive approach in terms of how these things are mapped. And that is exactly where PKS or Pivotal Container Service comes into play. So PKS can leverage um, uh, all of the software defined data center here and we can automatically create this connectivity. So as we deploy PKS, we'll just feed it information about where vCenter is, information about where the NSX controllers are. And once that initial uh, definition is done, as I do deployments of Kubernetes, these linkages will automatically be done for me. Huge power. So there's, there's value in the individual technology, but PKS brings it all together and creates a consistent and repeatable method for deploying a Kubernetes cluster. Now, I've only shown the VMware Software Defined Data Center. PKS can also deploy to various public clouds. At the time of this recording, PK, uh, BKS can deploy to GCP, but look for other uh, public clouds in the very near future. So now we've kind of satisfied the need of both the platform reliability engineer and the application developer. From a platform reliability engineer, if you're leveraging PKS, um, you have a very consistent, repeatable way to deploy Kubernetes, but you also have an easy way to map it. You have the ability to do upgrades and patching in a very um, easy and supportable way. So boy, these uh, platform reliability engineers, they're pretty happy. From an app dev standpoint, what do you have? Well, you've got your native Kubernetes API. PKS simply deploys native upstream Kubernetes. And so in that case, she's going to be happy because not only does she have a native Kubernetes API that she can leverage all the ecosystem of information around, um, but she knows be, you know, because we've got this easy mapping down here to a known infrastructure, um, we're going to have a pretty reliable API that's going to be up and running. So uh, hopefully this gives you some good understanding of how, uh, how all this works and how it all fits together. Thanks for watching. Thank you.